November 5th, 2021 will go down as one of the most tragic events in entertainment history. On this day, Astroworld, a music concert hosted by Travis Scott, one of the most famous artists on the planet, ended with eight people dead and over 300 people injured. People across the world have been going crazy over this news, and some people are even saying that this entire event was actually a demonic sacrifice straight from hell itself. Families have been devastated, hundreds of thousands of people have been traumatized, and Travis Scott's illustrious career and the state of his life is currently under judgment. This timeline is one of the most horrific stories I've ever had to research. Before we get into this video, out of respect for the families impacted by the situation, I am not going to play my intro. I will also not be making any jokes in this video, as this is not a laughing matter at all. My heart goes out to everyone impacted. And if this video is not demonetized, all money made from this video will be donated to the families involved, every single dime. If you want to see my usual content about what goes on in the sports world, check these videos out on my channel. But this situation is serious. This video is going to be the entire storyline in chronological order of what occurred at the Oscar World Festival held by Travis Scott, but it will be from the collective point of views that have been pushed out online. During this video, you will be seeing the experience of the entire tragedy as it unfolded in real time, and all imagery that you see in this video is completely real and is extremely intense. This whole situation is just so sad and viewer discretion is strongly advised. Sadly, this is the story of the Astroworld tragedy. Stop the show. I'm going to start by introducing everyone involved so you can truly understand what was going on. First, being Travis Scott. Travis Scott is one of the most famous musical artists on the planet. In fact, according to a study by Complex, where they asked people ages 18 to 34 who they thought was the most influential person in America, the number one answer was actually Travis Scott. Keep in mind, they could have said the President of the United States, Drake, LeBron James, etc. But they said Travis Scott. This just shows how famous and influential this man is. And with all this fame and influence, Travis Scott is known to have the most energetic and rowdy concerts out of any artist out there. In fact, he actually encourages it. This ain't no motherfucking dance show. You either get on this stage of rage or take your motherfucking ass home, you understand? The biggest festival that Travis Scott throws on is called Astroworld. Astroworld is a festival that only happens once a year and it takes place in Houston, Texas. Travis Scott owns this festival and he's the headlining artist for it, and as well as performing in it himself, he also gets a lineup of the most popping rappers in the industry to perform as well. In addition to this, there's a ferris wheel and carnival games happening side by side the actual concert, and this is seen as one of the biggest events every year since it started. Before this tragedy occurred, it was pretty much seen as heaven on earth for the youth. All your favorite rappers performing together while you can go on carnival rides with all your friends? Sounds like an amazing time, right? Well, at around 2pm, that's exactly what everyone thought. Fans were so hyped to get into this venue that people who weren't able to get tickets rushed the gates to get in, breaking down fences and crashing through security while doing so. Hundreds if not thousands of people broke into the venue. However, because nothing had happened yet, everyone just saw these kids breaking in as kids just trying to have a good time. Things got off to a hectic start at Astroworld Festival this morning when fans stampeded through the entrance, ripping down barricades and trampling over each other. Thousands of fans are there to enjoy the games, carnival rides, and of course, the music, especially the headliner and creator of the event, Travis Scott. And to have Astroworld back this year after it was postponed because of COVID in 2020 is a dream come true for these fans. Be in this environment again, it's just, it's been hard just like being stuck in the house. All about from the music to the festivities, fans say they're getting everything they expected and then some. And Astroworld continues tomorrow. These fans seemingly can't get enough. No. From 2 to 8 p.m., everyone who was able to get into the venue is having the time of their lives. Whether they had a ticket or not, teens and adults alike are riding the ferris wheels, eating cotton candy, and bonding with their friends. Smiles are rampant across everyone, and everyone is having a good time. Everyone's just waiting for 8.45, which is when Travis Scott is scheduled to perform. And once 8.10 hits, everyone starts gathering around the stage. However, something's wrong here. Remember how I said in the beginning of the video that people who didn't have tickets rushed the gates? Well. You see, concerts only have a set amount of tickets that they can sell for a reason. A venue's maximum capacity is the maximum number of people a venue can hold while still ensuring the safety of the people who are in there. When a venue is built, its max capacity is carefully calculated. And if in any instance a venue were to exceed this capacity, the area is no longer deemed a safe environment. 
and somebody getting hurt is statistically almost bound to happen because there's simply no space. Think of it like filling a water bottle. If you're filling an empty water bottle, while it's empty, everything's gonna stay in the bottle. However, the second you reach the cap, everything starts overflowing, and it physically would not be possible for you to carry more water in that bottle. Well, by rushing the gates, the same situation essentially occurred. Because people who didn't buy tickets initially were in the venue, the venue physically could not hold this many people. Now mix this with the fact that everyone was pushing each other trying to get to the front of the stage and get the best view of Travis Scott, and then mix that again with the fact that Travis encourages his fans to get rowdy, and you have a catastrophe just waiting to happen. So. 8.45 hits, and fans are all gathered around the stage. The sky is now dark, and everyone is smushed together. However, although everyone is uncomfortably smushed together, everyone is still hyped for Travis to perform, so everyone is trying to stay in good spirits. Right on time, Travis starts his show and does his thing. Every fan is extremely hyped. However, during this entire time of getting hype, people are starting to feel the ramifications of this overcapacity. Everyone is heating up because there's so many people around them, and they're so close together that they can't move at all. Some people are so tightly packed that they can't even breathe. They're trying to make their struggles be known, but no one is listening to them. People are too busy trying to turn up. Things are starting to look like they could get really bad. However, everyone is trying to ignore it and still have a good time. Nothing severe has happened yet at this point. Now. Fast forward to around 9.20 p.m. Travis Scott brings out Drake, another rapper who's one of the most famous artists on the planet right now, and the crowd goes crazy. Drake proceeds to do his thing, and people are trying their best to enjoy the concert. However, the added hypeness of Drake being there only makes the lack of space in the crowd situation get worse. Now, fast forward some more at 10 p.m. Things start to get absolutely horrible. People in the crowd can't put up with the lack of space anymore, and people simultaneously just start dropping to the floor. Within seconds, there's countless people who are completely unconscious, just stuck on the floor in the middle of the crowd. However, people are still so caught up in the performance that everyone just keeps dancing around them. And, extremely sadly, some of them pass away on the spot. It's absolutely horrific. However, nothing stops. Some people realize what's going on and start screaming at Travis and his staff to stop the show. However, Travis either just doesn't hear them or he's so focused on his performance that he doesn't truly understand what's going on. People are fucking dying over six white lives. That's the white kid. Who asked for this cop? Who asked for this cop? Who asked for this cop? That's okay, you see real quick. Please be this One moment, he notices that a man has passed out and stops the show for a second. And while this man is being taken out on the stretcher, Travis stares straight at him and continues singing. He then just continues his performance, leaving people outraged. Things get even worse. At one point, the ambulance comes to try to save people's lives, but instead of making a way for the ambulance, fans literally start dancing on top of their vehicles. Now, Fast forward to midnight, the concert's over and everyone who was there is traumatized. This whole situation is catastrophic and nobody knows the death count. The rest of the world doesn't even know any of this happened, but people who are in the crowd start sharing their experiences on TikTok. I'll showcase some of them right now. It just felt like we was like literally like in fucking hell, bro. Like it felt like we was in a concert in hell. You couldn't breathe. 
you couldn't see like just imagine all the people they gonna find tonight who was in that crowd who nobody could see who nobody could hear who passed out and everybody was just trumpling on top of them the whole fucking concert like i'm thinking it's probably gonna be like at least 100 people who dead tonight like in the vip section it was so many bodies laid out people was getting pulled out who was fainted people were trying to medicine trying to give them cpr and they was flipping them over and like they was literally turning them black and blue i never seen death in my fucking life bro just by me alone it was probably like 10 fucking people laid out dead and like once the medics tried to help them they wasn't responding they moved to the next person it was nothing they could have do like this shit like this shit really fucked me up and like really spooked me tonight like that was like some demonic shit people were screaming help trying to tell travis travis scott they was like help the whole crowd was just going to help 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 and he just kept going bro it was like, that shit was scary, bro. It was so demonic, bro. He sacrificed so many people's lives tonight, like, for real. He influenced people to be raging and all this shit. So many people broke in, and it was just chaos, bro. It was a living fucking hell, bro. I've never experienced anything like that in my entire life. Probably because I've never been surrounded by so many lifeless bodies. It was so demonic. The energy was so demonic. The set was demonic. Travis was demonic. We were literally in hell. Like, it felt like we were in hell. Nobody could breathe. We were all suffocating. Everybody around you was suffocating. We were standing on our tiptoes. And all you see is <gasps> everyone around you. Chins up, <gasps> gasping for air. And that's all you see around you. Like, this hurts to take a deep breath today. Like, we couldn't even breathe. People were bleeding out of their mouths and their nose. People were screaming bloody murder, literally. Begging for help from anybody. There was nothing that anybody could do. The floors were covered in bodies. You couldn't even put your foot on the ground. You're stepping over other people. You're stepping over other people's shoes, just trying to fucking breathe. If I would have hit the floor, I would have never gotten up. You can see like adults holding their children up, trying to get them to safety. They're, they're dragging dead bodies out of the crowd. Dead bodies. And Travis knew. Travis had a bird's eye view on everybody and could see everything. He was asked multiple times to stop and his responses are, you know what you were here for, something like that, and let's rage. I'm gonna take a couple days off from posting because I literally watched somebody die right in front of me. So basically, I get over the fence, this girl gets helped over, but she is out, like out cold, bro, like completely out. I don't know if it was her boyfriend or whoever she was with, but whoever she was with started crying like hysterically. And she's like, she's not waking up, she's not waking up, there's no pulse. They started uh, giving her CPR and I mean, nothing, bro. Literally pretty much the whole Travis performance, they're giving her CPR and they're like, where's the paramedics? Where's the paramedics? Every single one of these stories goes absolutely viral, getting over 50 million views combined in less than a day. The news goes worldwide, and people are saying that Astroworld was actually just a symbol of hell. This whole situation is catastrophic, and by November 6th, which was the next day, the official death toll is released, as well as over 300 people being announced as injured. 300. There's even a rumor going around that someone was drugging people in the crowd, one of which being a security officer who was trying to save somebody's life. We have learned the ages of those who died. One person was 14, one was 16, two were 21, two were 23, one was 27, and the age of the eighth person is not yet known. People have been showing up here for hours in tears, leaving flowers, writing messages at this memorial. One of the most shocking details we learned today is that Houston police are investigating an incident where a security officer may have been stuck in the neck with a syringe. We do have a report of a security officer that he was reaching over to restrain or grab a citizen and he felt a prick in his neck. When he was examined, he went unconscious. They administered Narcan. He was revived and the medical staff did notice a prick that was similar to a, a prick that you would get if somebody's trying to inject. After all this breaks out, Travis Scott then sends out an official apology saying this. Send out prayers to the ones that was lost last night. We're actually working right now to identify the families so we can help assist them through this tough time. My fans really mean the world to me and I always just really want to leave them with a positive experience. And anytime I can make out, you know, anything that's going on, you know, I, you know, I stop the show and help them get the help they need, you know? Um, I could just never imagine the severity of the situation. Uh, we've been working closely with everyone to just try to get to the bottom of this, the city of Houston, HPD, fire department, help us figure this out. If you have any information, you know, please just contact your local authorities. Everybody continue to just keep your prayers. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly just devastated. And I could never imagine anything like this just happening. I'm gonna do everything I can to keep you guys updated. And love you all.
The majority of people did not take this apology that well, and people started demanding justice. Some people say that Travis Scott is to blame for all the lives lost, and that he should serve jail time. Others are saying that it's security's fault. Many people are even making claims that Travis Scott sacrificed his fans to the demons. It gets absolutely crazy and no one knows what's going to happen next. Many people speculate that Travis Scott's career will be ruined over this and others said that he could go to jail. As I'm making this video, Travis Scott actually just got sued for quote unquote predictable and preventable. It's actually going to be insane to see how this plays out, but I truly wish the best for everyone involved. This is just such a sad and bad situation man, I wish it never happened. Everyone who bought a ticket was just trying to have fun after COVID and now people's lives are lost. I can't even imagine. My heart goes out to everyone impacted. Once again, every single dime made from this video will go to the families impacted. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about the situation. Do you think Travis Scott is at fault? Do you think it's the security? Do you think it's the venue? What do you think should happen to Travis Scott? Do you think he should go to jail? Do you think he should be fined? What do you think should happen? Let me know in the comments. I hope this video informed people what was going on. Subscribe to this channel for more documentary content. And without further ado, I'm out. Peace.